The average American eats more than 75 pounds of chicken meat every year. Our appetite for chicken has come at a high cost, often hidden from consumers. When we get chicken at a grocery store or in a restaurant, it's hard to remember that the meat we're buying comes from an animal. We don't know how this meat was produced. We see the end product cut and shrink-wrapped or battered and deep-fried. We may have a picture, left over from elementary school, of chickens clucking in a barnyard, scratching and pecking at the earth. But for the vast majority of the 8 billion chickens raised and killed in the United States each year, little could be further from the truth. This compassion over killing investigation was produced with undercover footage from chicken farms and slaughter plants in the United States, including two of the country's largest poultry producers, Tyson and Purdue. The conditions our investigators documented are not uncommon. They are the industry standard. The life of a broiler chicken, a chicken raised and killed for meat, begins in a commercial hatchery. In large walk-in incubators, chicks hatch by the thousands. They never meet their mothers. The chicks are boxed in crates and then dumped in long warehouses with tens of thousands of other chicks. In the 1950s, it took 84 days to raise a five-pound chicken. Because of genetic selection and growth-promoting drugs, it now takes an average of only 45 days. University of Arkansas researchers say if we grew as fast as a chicken, we'd weigh 349 pounds by age two. On the factory farm, the chickens will never once step foot outdoors or breathe fresh air. Instead, they will become increasingly overcrowded as they grow at severely accelerated rates on an unnatural diet including manure and the rendered remains of other chickens. A leading welfare problem caused by intensive genetic selection for fast growth is the high rate of leg disorders. According to research published in the veterinary record, more than 20% of broiler chickens suffer chronic pain as a result of bone disease. Some crippled chicks are unable to reach the water dispensers. Other chicks become trapped in the feeders where they die of thirst. Compassion over killing investigators delivered aid to many animals in need. We found a bird caught in her feeder. She's immobilized and she has no access to water, so we're going to offer some now. As the weeks pass and the chicks grow, open space in the shed decreases. A heavy blanket of dust from feathers, feed, and litter covers the equipment and hangs in the air. The pollution, feces, and filth inside the shed mix with the stench of ammonia, making the air unhealthy to breathe. We're in the middle of the shed, and we're going to test the level of ammonia in the air at the bird's level. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control recommends that workers not be exposed to ammonia levels more than 35 parts per million for more than 15 minutes. But actual ammonia levels are often twice this amount, and chickens are exposed to these elevated levels for weeks, not minutes. The ammonia level is 72 parts per million. In such conditions, factory farmers accept that many chickens will die from disease and stress. As two industry researchers write, is it more profitable to grow the biggest bird and have increased mortality? Simple calculations suggest that it is better to get the weight and ignore the mortality. 
It's not profitable to give chickens individualized veterinary care. Instead, they are left to die. After only four weeks, hundreds of birds are dead and their rotting bodies lie throughout the shed. Forced to have lived in their own waste, many of the corpses show signs of feather loss and burns on their stomachs from noxious ammonia. As the birds reach their last two weeks of life on the factory farm, welfare problems grow even more serious. Mentally, these chickens are still babies, but they're trapped in bodies too heavy for their legs to hold or their organs to support. Industry journal Feedstuffs reports, broilers now grow so rapidly that the heart and lungs are not developed well enough to support the remainder of the body, resulting in congestive heart failure and tremendous death 